Hello there and welcome to Foodie Legends, your go-to source for the best foods to eat around the world and its history. In our previous video, we had a stop in the Tamil region to have a taste of their traditional foods. We are now at the second part of our Indian subcontinental journey and we are very thankful for the support that you are giving us. If you haven't watched our videos yet, come on now and give it a try. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you guys can catch up to our latest food journeys. Without anything further to do, let's go! The Kashmir region is divided into two, the Kashmir Valley and the Indian administered region of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, and the Azad Kashmir, which is administered by Pakistan. Kashmiri cuisine was heavily influenced by the nations that once invaded and traded with it, such as Afghanistan, Persia, the Middle East, and Central Asia. As a result, the Kashmiri style of cooking developed into a highly sophisticated art, one that can make your mouth salivate and wish that you have a second stomach. Today, we are going to have a taste of top 5 yummy delights from the Kashmir region that you are simply not allowed to skip off. To start off properly is to start with a stew, because there's no better way to start eating than with a nice and warm pot of stew, right? You're goddamn right. Coming in at number 1 on our list is Shabdaik or Shabdaik a popular Kashmiri stew to eat during the cold nights in the region. Shabdaig is a stew traditionally eaten during the specially cold Kashmiri winter, cooked with enduring warmth and patience. The word Shab is translated as night, and Daig means cauldron, which are indeed very apt words to describe this Kashmiri stew dish. Shabdaig can be made with various types of meat, such as lamb, mutton, chicken or rooster, or beef. Nowadays, meatballs are also used with the same meaty good results. It is cooked with turnips and many herbs and spices like ginger, fennel seeds, cinnamon, cardamom, and Kashmiri garam masala to produce that rich and delicious broth that will coat the meat in hot goodness. But that's just one part of it. What makes Shabdaig truly special is that it needs to be cooked for a very long time. Say, overnight is fine, cooked in a vessel with its lids sealed with dough, heated by a heart powered by wood flames. The end result is a super aromatic stew that it's just a trailer for a stew so flavorful that you need a platter of flatbread or rice to fully enjoy the gastronomic sensation. That is a sure way to remove the winter gloom out of your heart. Yes. 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 Coming in second on our list is the Rogan Josh, Kashmir's classic curry that traveled a long, long way from where it actually came from. So the story goes like this. During the 16th to 19th centuries, there was an empire that spanned the Indian subcontinent. This empire was known as the Mughal Empire. The Mughals were influenced by the Persians, including in their way of cooking. And so the Mughals introduced Rogan Josh to the Indian subcontinent, a dish that was actually a descendant of the Persian kitchens a long time ago in a land that is far, far away. Eventually, Rogan Josh developed to be something that is uniquely Kashmiri and one of the region's true culinary treasures. The name of this dish can be attributed to many origins. It is possible that Rogan Josh was derived from the words Rogan, which means clarified butter in Persian and Urdu, and Josh, meaning to stew or brace. Literally, the words mean stewed in ghee. However, other food experts claim that the dish's name was derived from the Kashmiri word rogan, which means brown or red, and ghost, which means meat. Whatever the situation is, 
let's just focus on how delicious Rogan Josh is. Rogan Josh is lamb meat braised in a gravy made with garlic, browned onions, ginger, yogurt, and aromatic herbs like bay leaves, cinnamon, cardamom, and cloves. The dish is spiced by the seeded Kashmiri chilies, which gives rich aroma and milder compared to our classic Indian chili, but fiery nonetheless. Rogan Josh can be cooked using the Dampok Tak cooking method, which means slow cooking the curry in a pot sealed with dough over low heat. Rogan Josh is best eaten with plain or spiced basmati rice or with Indian flatbreads. Rogan Josh is so delicious that it gained fame outside the Indian subcontinent, making its way to the United Kingdom with the introduction of Indian cuisine to the country. A timeless curry indeed. Do you want to have a short break from meat after the rich dishes ahead on our list? If you do, then the next one is the right one for you. Coming in third on our list is Nadru Yakni, also known as Lotus Root Curry. Yep, you heard that right. When we think of a lotus, our minds always go straight to the lotus flower or the famous lotus leaf. We know that certain cuisines are using the lotus leaf to wrap the meat and will be covered with clay to capture that herbal aroma. However, although it is not an uncommon vegetable ingredient, not many people know that the lotus root is a very wonderful thing to cook. It is delicious and filled with the nutrition. To be precise, lotus root is not actually a root but rather a stem. Lotus plants can grow as tall as 4 feet, its stems coming out of the water and become the anchor of its signature leaf and flowers. Lotus stem, when cooked properly, is a delight to the palate, crisp but with some tender texture. Lotus stem is somewhat similar to turnips and just as nutritious. Nadruyakni is a classic Indian curry popularly eaten in Jammu and Kashmir. It is not as spicy as the other dishes on our list, but still flavorful and rich in spice that make it a surreal experience. Nadruyakni is made by cooking the spices in ghee and ginger. These spices may include anise, cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, and garam masala. The half-cooked lotus roots are then added to the party, and finally yogurt is added for the final touch. It will be then be simmered over low heat and there you have it. A nice pot of lotus root curry that you can eat over your rice or where you can dip the naan. Lotus root or nadru was claimed to be discovered in the 15th century. The 8th Sultan of Kashmir, Giyaz ud Din Zain ul Abidin, saw the plant for the first time while on a boat ride. It was introduced to him by the locals, and he was surprised when it was served to him during a special dinner feast and it tasted delicious. From then on, the Sultan ordered its propagation in all of Kashmir's lakes, and the rest is history. Coming in at number 4 on our list is Goshtava, a dish that you cannot simply refuse for many reasons. Goshtaba is another traditional curry dish hailing from the Kashmir region, popularly dubbed as the Dish of Kings. During the invasion of the Mongol conqueror Timur in the Indian subcontinent, he brought with him a lot of skilled cooks from Samarkand. In turn, these expert chefs introduced new ingredients such as saffron, turmeric, and the most important of them all, yogurt. Kashmiris and the Pandits love eating meat, and the arrival of these special ingredients took it to a whole new level. Goshtaba is mild, rich, and meaty. All of these heavenly food descriptions are encapsulated in this royal dish. It is made with minced mutton, fennel powder, mustard oil, cumin, 
fenugreek and cumin powder, ghee, saffron, and yogurt. The result is this meaty mutton meatballs, swimming and rich yogurt sauce. Gostaba is served as the last dish of a Wasman feast, which is a multi-course meal during some of the dishes on our list. Well, Gostaba is the last savory dish served just before the dessert. Gostaba is a transforming stage that prepares the eater's palate for dessert. To refuse Gostaba in a Wasman feast means insulting your host. So eat wisely and make sure that you are not stuffed enough to survive 7 to 36 dishes. Coming in last on our list is not exactly a meal, but definitely a good way to conclude the wonderful feast that we have today. Nice. So, coming in number 5 on our list is Kawa. A favorite drink amongst the emperors. Kawa is a way of preparing green tea, popularly used in countries such as India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and various regions in Central Asia. There are various ways of preparing kawa, and you can either drink it the classic way with the leaves on, or just by infusing the warm water with the tea leaves extract and have a nice clear tea. In Kashmir, kawa is prepared in a very special manner. The green tea leaves are boiled enhanced by other herbs such as saffron, cinnamon, cardamom, and occasionally, Kashmiri roses. Once the process is done, a sweet final touch is added like honey or sugar, and additionally crushed nuts like almonds. Although no one knows how kawa was invented, some experts believe that it arrived in Kashmir via the space route, back when the region was an important part of the path. Kawa means sweetened tea in Kashmir, although the word itself may have originated from kave, the Turkish word for coffee, which was derived from the Arabic gawa. Kashmiri sometimes call kawa the Mughal chai since it was introduced by the Mughal emperors to the Kashmir Valley. Now, kawa is more than an emperor's tea, but can be enjoyed by people of all classes. It is now commonly served to guests or as part of a celebratory dinner. Throughout the ages, kawa survived the test of time and remained Ashka's Mir's popular tea. Thanks again for tuning in with us here today at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste of hearty dishes that Kashmir has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too, so leave a comment below to let us know what your favorite part of the video was or if you want to just leave us with a few thoughts. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.